Welcome to the David F. Haas podcast. I'm your host, David F. Haas. Thanks for taking the time to to listen in today. Today's podcast, I'm going to talk about uh, finances and this new perspective that I've I've recently come across, um, and uh, all the awareness that came along with recognizing um, this new financial concept. And you know, one of the things that I that I've kind of learned over over the years of kind of being in business is that when people start to make like real money. Uh, everyone has different ideas of what to do with that money once they get it. And, you know, guys like Alec Hermosi talking about this, but it's like, you know, ultimately everyone can do their own thing. And and where I was before I came across this new concept um, with respect to getting out of debt, and it's all, it's all based on Dave Ramsey. Uh, I was like a, I was actually not a believer in Dave Ramsey when he was talking about not having a car loan and not having a mortgage. And I was like, this is all crazy. This is all for like, uh, the millionaire who is still poor. And like, that is like the last thing that I ever want to be being a person that has a million bucks and then, then being cheap essentially is, is what I've wanted to avoid. And, and probably there's some internal wounds about how, because of how t- cheap my dad was his whole entire life that I never want to be perceived as that guy either. Um, so, but after I started listening to and consuming his content a little bit more, what, what I recognized was that um, the thing that I want most, sorry, I'm just checking out this, is is emotional freedom, if that makes sense, right? And so in order for me to, to get that emotional freedom, I need to separate myself as much as possible from anything that is blocking my connection to all or to God or to the universe or whatever you're your understanding of that. And that's why recently I quit, I cut all sugar out of my diet. I got off the, the Coke zero, which was my addiction. It, it wasn't so much. Yeah, sure. I want to be healthier and I want to look better. Um, but what I really want is that connection. And then now as I've, you know, cleared that space, you know, I've been clean and sober for the last two months or so. And, <laughs> and so now that I clear that space, another thing that has come into my awareness that is taking up space in my mind is this this idea of debt. Um, and so what basically Dave Ramsey, he has these, these baby steps. And basically what he says is, um, you pay off all debt, right? First. So you pay off all, and if you have credit cards, if you have car loans, if you have all that, you pay off that all first. And then you start a 15% savings where you save 15% of your income and everything else you aggressively pay off your mortgage with. Right. And so I was always in the school of thought that, um, why would I pay my mortgage off? Especially right now, like my mortgage is locked in at like 1.9%. And it's like, why would I pay off 1.9% mortgage when my money is making me 10%? And as I started reflecting on that, what I recognized was that the reason that you do that isn't so much about the financial sense that it makes, it's more so about the freedom that you will experience from no longer having a mortgage, no longer having a car loan. And uh, I, I don't know if I'm fully bought in yet, but I definitely, what it's definitely got me to do is to like really take a look at my finances and really get an understanding because I was always in the mindset of, uh, if I have more expenses, I just make more money. It's like really that simple. Um, if my my cost of living goes up. I just go make more money, which is a great, I think a great thing to have. It's a great ability to, and confidence to have that you can just make more money. If you go buy a new car that costs a little bit more, you say, okay, well, you know, for me, I got to do, do some more sales out Lungo Vito, or I got to, I got to sign some more clients. But what I'm recognizing is that if I merge those two concepts together, the Ramsey concept and the Dave Haas concept of just go make more money when things get more expensive, I could like dramatically pay my pay like I could pay my mortgage off in a matter of you know maybe five or six years kind of thing and and the idea and like once that came into my awareness like the idea of being completely debt free is seems like a very freeing concept now I don't want to put that freedom uh, out there and that's what I did when I first started buying like you know first first started buying into the the concept of pay all this debt out I was immediately like I have to go do this. And I recognized that I, I was like kind of stealing my own happiness away a little bit, like really quickly. And I I pulled myself out of it. It was like, I now need to have this thing, which is debt being debt free to be free or to be happy. 
And once I recognized I was doing like, you know, that's what I used to do with like the money, having the money or having the car. It was like, once I get that thing, or once I have this amount of money in the bank, then I'll be happy. And now it's like, well, once I have no mortgage, then I'll be happy. And I, I had to recognize myself and stop myself there and just say, no, like, let's just enjoy like the process and the journey of being financially responsible. And so not that I'm going to become cheap, but I am going to be much more conscious of the way that I'm spending my money and just to like have a really good, a really good handle on it. And every additional dollar that I make is going to go towards paying off my mortgage because I have no really other debt. Well, I do have car loans, right? I have a lease. I have two car leases. And so and Brie and I have decided that we're going to, when those leases come up, we're going to buy those cars out so that we don't have, we don't have any more car payments. So my car payments, to be transparent here, like my car payments are like almost 1600 bucks a month between my truck and Bree's truck. And so it's like, geez, imagine you start saving 1600 bucks a month, right? My mortgage payment is 20, almost 2,700 bucks a month, right? So just in eliminating car payments and eliminating more, I'm going I'm to start saving $4,000 a month that are going to be put into an investment. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like, this is how like people really build wealth because you are no longer giving your money to the bank. You're, you have eliminated the bank and the interest. You've eliminated as quickly as you possibly can so that all of the money that you make, you get to keep. And then that money begins to go to work for you. And that's like the biggest difference between rich people and, and middle-class people. And something that, you know, I'm just starting to really lean into now. And, and, it, and it had to come from actually kind of going out there and getting some of the stuff that I always wanted. And then the second I got it, the desire for it went away. And so part of that was part of the journey. I could see that. But the, the thing that rich people do that is different from middle class or poor people is they see money as a tool to make more money. And so... Uh, I got my R8 sitting in my garage and that's like a $150,000 car. And it's like, that's $150,000 that could be making me money. Instead, it's sitting in my garage, losing me money. And, and so now I'm like, oh my God, like what an idiot decision that was to buy that. All right now, but also, even though it was an idiot decision, it was a necessary step to my financial evolution. And so everything is happening in perfect, perfect order. Uh, in perfect synchronicity, there are no coincidences. And I just now, instead of beating myself up for it, I just say, oh, that happened exactly the way it was supposed to happen. I got introduced to Ramsey exactly the way I'm supposed to get introduced to Ramsey. I am now moving on this path of paying my mortgage off as quickly as I possibly can. And I don't have to get attached to the outcome of like one day when that mortgage is paid off. But I am going to move forward with um, a sense of urgency, right? Like I am going to like, really like I'm probably going to sell my car and put that money on my mortgage, right? I'm probably going to sell other things that I'm not using and put that money as quickly as I possibly can onto my mortgage. And it'll be interesting to see when people listen to this podcast, if they agree or disagree, because I was on the other side for a long time and it was because it didn't make financial sense to me. But what I recognize that is that this is more than making financial sense and I've coached a lot of people actually on this exact concept, but it was always with people that were in like credit card debt. Sometimes people have been in like, um, like the money mart loan debt, which is like the, like those guys are complete crooks and just keep people in the loop of having to pay and payday loans and all that mess. And I, I went down that road myself before. And so I understand how hard it is to get out of that cycle. But once you pay off like credit card debt, right? I, I had my big debts were credit card debt and government debt where I owned back taxes to the government. When I paid those two debts off, the, the sense of freedom that I had was amazing, but it wasn't like this crazy sense of freedom. But the thing that shifted immediately was I began saving money. Like I was just watching my money so close. And, and I think if you're not, haven't gone through the practice of understanding where every single dollar that you make is going, you're just flying blind, right? It's like it's like running a business and not knowing uh, what you made every single day or every single week or every single month. You're just you're just going through the motions. You have no idea where all your money is going, and that is basically being unaware. And and this is the same thing in spiritual growth. It's like you want to create awareness around the things that limit you. And so, 
when I recognize that, I'm like, oh my God, I need awareness. So what I did is like what I did years ago and the same way I got to get out of the credit card debt was I tracked every single dollar that I made. And, and once I did that, the process of tracking every dollar that I made got me more financially responsible. And the second I saw that back then it was like I was bringing in, let's say 70,000 and I was spending 75,000. The second I saw that I was spending more than I was making, I didn't really have to do anything else after that. I just reeled my spending in naturally without having to even really budget or do anything along those lines. And so I went through that exact same process again this time because I kind of had fallen off. And and while my numbers are higher, I recognize that I, all I've done in the last 10 years is, yeah, sure, I made some uh, some investments and I bought Lingo Vita and did all this stuff. But all I've done is just increase my lifestyle and I'm still kind of living in that same space. Yes, I'm investing more and I'm doing that kind of stuff and making more, but I'm still kind of like spending a lot of money, more money than I was spending back when I was broke essentially, right? And so I'm like, oh my God, I just got to reel all this spending in again. And so this is like where I'm headed now. And the big, I think the big takeaway is, is that even if you agree or disagree with paying your mortgage off quickly, it's like, it's about the, sh the mindset shifts that's going to make. It's like me getting out of debt, out of like that immediate credit card debt and government debt was the mindset shift that needed me to move me to a next level of wealth. And I can see that this is the exact same thing that's going to happen when I pay off car loans and when I pay off um, my mortgage. It's going to take me to this next level of wealth where um, you don't do things anymore with debt. You know, you do things all with cash and, and there's like just these two schools of thought and there's so much information out there about, about doing things with debt and not. And, and now I think I've just tuned into the other side of like, no, that's like, it's supposed to be debt free. And the funny thing about it is, is, uh, it's also in like in the Bible. Um, and you know, whether you agree or disagree with the Bible, it's like a lot of the lessons in the Bible are like lessons that have been around for like 2000 years. Right. And so, or even longer. And essentially when you're in debt, you, you have a karmic connection to whoever you are in debt to. And it's almost like you're under the thumb of that debtor. And so when you pay off debt, and this is where I was like back in the day when I was in real tough, rough shape, I had creditors calling me and, and I, my car got repossessed and I had to get the car out of Hawk. And it was like this whole, this whole process that I had to go through when I felt like a, like a prisoner, right? When I got out of that debt, it felt like I was free. And and that's what allow, allowed me to move to new levels of wealth. And so I'm recognizing now that that my mortgage is a prison. My car loans are a prison because they're telling me that I need to make a certain amount of money in order to continue to maintain that lifestyle. And that's like, that's like a burden in some ways, right? And so I wanna just separate myself from that burden and that's the path that I'm headed on uh, to move towards like debt freedom. And I, I don't know what the baby steps of uh, Dave Ramsey has, and maybe I could go through them quickly, but you can also just look it up at uh, Dave Ramsey stuff. But it's like step one is um, you say you have a thousand dollars in your bank emergency fund. Uh, step two is you, you've like um, you pay off all debt, including car loans. Step three is you start saving 15%. Step four is you pay off your mortgage as fast as you can. There's a couple other ones. Uh, you can look them up for yourself. Uh, and like, I'm pretty much halfway along the way. The only thing that I haven't done is I haven't paid off my car loans and my, and my mortgage. And so that, that's where I'm headed now. And I'm excited about kind of like watching this whole thing unfold. And it's going to kind of be like a fun little game to play, um, with like, how fast can I, can I pay this mortgage off? And that's the way I kind of see money now is it's like more of like, just like a marker of like how I'm doing as opposed to like the worrying about needing money, uh, to impress people or needing money for my own sense of security. I've kind of like let go of all of that. I, I have this belief that I'll be okay no matter what. And so now it's more so of just a game. But when I, when I came across this concept, I got all wrapped up in it and I started putting pressure and stress. And actually last week I was just saying to my, my coaching group that I was like feeling super frustrated and like, and then when I recognized when I was frustrated, even though I didn't know what the frustration was about, but the frustration was about me creating pressure for myself to get on this program and get out of debt. And that was creating frustration in me. But because I was holding on to that frustration, all of the other little things in my life that normally 
I could have a little bit of frustration about it and just notice it and let it pass. The, it just began stacking up because I had this, I was essentially in the state of fight or flight. I was like, I have to do this. And I was creating all of this stress. So then when, you know, I had her, I was dropping off Harlow to school and she was like having a meltdown and not wanting to do it. And she did that, that, that three days in a row. And on like the third day that she did it, I like was just so infuriated. <laughs> I like punched my steering wheel in the car and not because I, I'm mad at her. It's just because uh, I don't like her to be sad essentially. And when she's sad, it creates uh, more stress in me. And the punching of the steering wheel was just the stacking up of all of these tiny little things happening. But it was it was built upon this one big piece of frustration and stress was like, I got to go and do this thing. And so thankfully, I have my group. And we as I walk through the process, I recognize I'm like, oh, my God, I created all this all this for myself. And this is what's happening to all of us. We're creating all of our own stress. None of it even exists besides in our own minds. We have cre- we have sh- molded our own lens that we are seeing the, the world through. And I was seeing the world through the lens of comparison, through the lens of not having enough, through the lens of not good enough. And once I noticed that, I was like, oh, I just, I just stepped completely out of it. And today, because my group was Miss Thursday Nights, um, and so today I just felt so much more clear and actually excited about the prospect of going down this road towards, uh, financial freedom. So, um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to kind of share with you. I think it's, I think just really an introducing to the Dave Ramsey concept, but the one thing I don't think I hear Dave talk about a lot, I mean, I'm sure it's in there is the, the freedom that exists when you become debt free. Right. And it's like, uh, I'll actually, I'm, I'll pull up because I helped one of my clients do this. I'll pull up one of the reviews quickly here from my, one of my clients because I helped, I walked him through this. So this is, this is my client, Rob, uh, who's like killed. He's like, just three years ago, my bank, my bank wouldn't give me a loan because of outstanding collections. Today, my credit score is 825 and climbing. Even better than that, I have saved and invested over $100,000 dollars with your help, I went from being in the red to where I am today. I'm forever grateful. And so it's like what Rob is explaining there is what happens when you find he was in this like collections and debt for so long. And the funny thing about it was it wasn't even that much money. And so once he finally made the intention that he was going to clear that, once that happened, not only did he get out of debt, but then he started saving so much more money. And that's, I think, the, exactly the Ramsey way as well. Once you get out of debt, your wealth goes, it just hockey sticks, right? And uh, and not only that, but your emotional well-being, I think, will also shift as well because you'll just be, you'll just feel so like nothing can kind of hurt you, right? You'll just be in such a great place and you'll be, you'll be out from under the thumb of all of these financial institutions that you owe money to, right? And uh, it's, it's gotta, it's gotta be an amazing feeling and I'm not there yet, so I can't tell you about it, but I, I, I do know that what it felt like to get out a credit card short-term debt and it was, it was just amazing. And then my wealth just did hockey stick from that that piece. So if you're in credit card debt, get out of that first and then go with me on this journey. I'll give I'll, I'll do some podcasts like quarterly on, on my updates. Maybe I can even start sharing some numbers of like what my car loans are and what my my mortgages. It'll keep me accountable. It'll be fun to do. Um, but yeah, that's the path I'm on. And uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, and thanks for taking the time to tune in. I also started a new segment on my on my Instagram and social media and YouTube shorts called uh, the Haas Hotline. So if you have any questions for me, um, uh, send them to me, DM me. I'm probably do some some of that Haas Hotline right here on the on the podcast as well. So really looking to know like what's at top of mind for you right now. Where where are your struggles? Where you're stuck? Uh, and then that way it'll give me some great content and I can answer your questions as well. So check that out. And also, um, Lungo Vita, make sure you get booking at Lungo Vita. The summer's booking up quick. I was just out there today with my buddy, Tony, and we got some good stuff coming up, him and I, and I was in the hot tub, in the sauna, and even though it was rainy and shitty out there, it was just like so refreshing and relaxing. Uh, so make sure if you're thinking about staying at Lungo Vita this summer, you, you get a spot now because the summer's booking up quick. Other than that, thanks for taking the time. See you next Sunday.